So just to give you an idea, this coast road from uh, Cashel to Roundstone, you can see it's just going to follow the contour of the coast all the way out. It's pretty, it's not a sunny day, but uh, it's still nice. Get another look. So we've just driven all the way along the coast there. So this is the little town of uh, Roundstone I was mentioning. Beautiful little spot. Another one of these towns I've driven through a million times. I keep promising I'm gonna stay in it, but I uh, <laughs> never do. Little harbour. Well, maybe it's just me, but does this not look like the Doc Martin place if you've ever watched it? back out into the wilds if memory serves me correctly I think there's a nice beach up here I didn't put it on the route but if I see the sign for it I'll head out to it uh, I think there's beaches down here Gertine Bay it's called let's go down and have a look it's only two minutes down here not even It's actually a two-way road, believe it or not. It's busy today. Beautiful beach, huh?
see the, this is what I mean, you see the landscape there, the rock just jutting up out of it. I've said it before, but uh, Ireland looks more like it was forged. <laughs> than anything, it was just hammered out of the land. So we're coming into Ballycanely here. That's it, if you blink you'd miss it. misty today and I said this before as well but that's what I mean about Ireland uh, you, uh, you just can't uh, rely on the weather We're in the middle of June here we should be blistering sunshine but uh, nope in an elf photo I'm just taking a little detour off here. If you remember, if you watched the uh, the route planning phase of the Wild Atlantic Way videos I did, I mentioned in this section that uh, there was a monument for all cock and brown. And they were the guys that made the first uh, transatlantic uh, airplane flight. Uh, when they flew from the US and landed here So there should be a monument up here. I think this if memory serves me correctly If not this section another section somewhere eventually goes a bit uh, off-roady So uh, just keep that in mind. It might not be this bit, but maybe a bit further up but uh, we'll go and uh, Yeah, this isn't the section. It's the next section that uh, It goes a bit off road. So here's the monument here. Bloody fog with a great view out if we'd uh, if we'd no fog here now. So uh, yeah, there's a monument to Jesus. It's fantastic. I've never been here, but what a view! I'm raging that there's a bit of a fog. But, uh, let's get a photograph. Oh my god, that is gorgeous. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. But uh, we go and read the, uh, make sure I'm rolling. Let's go read the plaques. And get the lowdown on all cock and brown. So you can see it's shaped like the tail of a plane. This memorial honors the achievement of John Alcock and Arthur Whitten Brown. The first men to fly non-stop across the Atlantic Ocean on the morning of the 15th day of June. Jeez, that's only, uh, that's only two days from now. Uh, 1919, uh, they landed their aircraft 500 yards beyond the Cairn, which can be seen one and a half miles south of this point. Having left St. John's Newfoundland 16 hours and 27 minutes before the aircraft was a Vickers Vimy biplane powered by two Rolls-Royce Eagle uh, 13 engines of 350 horsepower each. And the average speed during the flight was 115 miles an hour. Dedicated this 15th day of June 1959 to Nagashka Granta Air Klarna Spera. So the 15th of June, today's only the 13th of June. So in two days time, it'll be uh, the anniversary. <sighs> I 
Darcy's new town. The town of Clifton was a prominent landmark that at Alcock and Brown spotted as they searched for a landing place following the heroic transatlantic flight in 1919. Clifton was the brainchild of John Darcy, whose family had been a major Connemara landowners for 150 years. He built a mansion for himself and turned a fishing hamlet into Clifton Town to encourage trade. By the time of his death in 1839, Clifton had attracted pioneering residents from all over Ireland and had industries, markets, inns and coast guard station as well as predecessors of the churches whose spires dominate the landscape today. Since 1842 a simple memorial to John Darcy has overlooked his town. The aftermath of the Great Famine however bankrupted the family and the town was bought by an English family. Prosperity returned with the railway, uh, the Marconi radio station and tourism. Very interesting, what a landscape. What a uh, what a viewing point. And what's interesting, what struck me about that is is that they took off from Newfoundland. Now, if you remembered earlier in the trip, we were speaking about um, the cable that came into Valencia Island. Uh, the first transatlantic cable. And that also started in Newfoundland. This plaque was unveiled by Anne Alcock, niece of Sir John Alcock, on the 15th of June, 1994, to mark the 75th anniversary of the first non-stop transatlantic flight. That's very now there's another landmark we're going to try and get up to see i think i'm pretty sure i plotted it into but it's a bit off-roady so we'll give it a go we'll give it a go sure but that's very interesting now look that's clear enough now can i get a better picture what a view look at the lock the fishing nets or something all along there. Again, another spot I, I, I've never been to and I've driven past it a dozen times, I'm sure. And I happened to find it on Google. But I love finding these little historic spots. You know, not a huge history buff, but I like to get the highlights, you know, just to get a flavor of what the heck happened. You know, I'm no expert. But yeah, that was interesting. That's nice. Right, sure if we crack on and see what's next. Now, just two minutes away from there now, just straight across the junction on the way back, we're onto this road that should bring us up to the to the actual landing spot, I think. And uh, from what I remember on Google Street View, this gets a bit uh, squiffy. Yeah, so it doesn't look like you can go any further on the bike. Don't know if I'm allowed to open this one. Hmm. Oh, hang on and uh, ask these people maybe. A 
A few moments later. Thank you. I'm not even sure if I'm technically allowed to do this, but that man offered to open the gate for me, so I'll chance it. I just hope I get a spot wide enough to uh, to turn her around. I don't have to do a 50 point turn up here. Now, can I see it even? Where is it? Where is it? I thought it would be pretty close. But I don't see it. Walkers are too impressed with me. <laughs> Did I get the evils. <laughs> Here we go. Now I can turn the bike here. Can't I? Yeah. There, see there's the boardwalk. Just look at that mound of turf. Just like a wall of turf. Probably too. This looks like there's more turning spots up there. This is dry. Otherwise, this turf would just be slush. Hello. Yeah, there's the boardwalk. Look, I can't. Uh, that's the track up to it. Budgery guard. I thought I could drive up that dirt track. I'm not driving up that boardwalk. I get arrested. Oh no! Wait, now here it is. Look, there it is, right in front of me. The road's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Ah, oh, there's loads of room here. We're sorted. And I have the place to myself, so let's see if we can get the drone up over this yoke. Oh, 
What a spot. What a spot. I'm definitely coming back here in the car and hike it a bit. But see the white tower there, that's the uh, that's the crash site. Princess Elettra Marconi Giovanelli unveiled the plaque on the 28th of June 1995 to commemorate the 100th year anniversary of the development of wireless by her father. Wireless? Googly, Googly Marconi. This site was used by Marconi as the first commercial transatlantic wireless station between 1907 and 1922. Princess Electra Marconi unveiled it. Wow, so we went to the first wired location and now the first wireless location. See, Ireland rocking it in the lead of telecommunications globally. What a... What a spot. What a bit of history. What's this joke? This is four. Doesn't do that. Well, let's see if we can get this uh, this thing on drone. So we're right at the monument. It's a, uh, it's a cool place to think that that plane came all the way over and landed here. Well, I say landed, <laughs> crashed. But uh, geez, they couldn't have picked a nicer location, that's for sure. Um, and they have they've done a nice job of uh, marking it and all, you know, in this little spot to boardwalk up to it. Really nice. Now you can drive up to it like I just did. There's no car park, like you wouldn't drive a car up it. But the bike goes up now, I'm not sure if you're supposed to. I think it's kind of like Anna Skull. Um, it's just the cattle gate. There was no sign saying you couldn't. But uh, look at that, that's cool, isn't it? Oh, it shows where it was built. That's excellent. The powerhouse. So, uh, but you do get some funny looks from the pedestrians walking down, so it's up to you, but it's a good, it's a good mile and a half, I'd say, from the gate up, so uh, if you're geared up like I am, you probably wouldn't want to walk it. If you're in the car, it'd be grand, it'd be a nice little walk up, but I'm not spending a mile and a half, it'd be three miles, 
15, about 45 minutes to an hour walking up you know on my gear no way so yeah that was a nice little spot happy with that let's get the flip out of here now so let's get down off this uh, without upsetting anyone but uh, that was a good little find like I said, 6 o'clock is still telling me I'll get in at the uh, the hotel, so I still have an hour to play with. Thank you. Hello, thank you. So I got a bit of aerial footage, but uh, Jesus it was very windy and very misty, and I didn't realise. But when the, when I got the drone down, it was soaking wet, just dry flying through the mist, and gathering all the uh, the moisture onto it. So hopefully I haven't damaged it. Now uh, I stripped down some of the gear when I when I got home, so I to cut down and weight and, and space. I got rid of the because I was so happy with the mini. I just left the the full size uh, uh, drone at home. So I only have the little mini one with me um, So if it goes uh, belly up with the moisture, I'm snookered But uh, brilliant drone, I mean I've taken a chance just bringing that drone I think it'll get 80% of everything, the only time it won't get anything if the wind is very strong But if the wind is very strong I probably wouldn't drop the big one either, you know So uh, <coughs> So I'm happy enough to just bring the Mini. I might put the other one up on the market. I'm still undecided on it yet though. Thank you. When you're in uh, situations like this and you're not sure if you're supposed to be on this road, it's always best to keep the L speed and the noise and the revs down and say thank you please and uh, let's get out of Dodge before somebody rings the L copper roonies. Or just decides to go off on a, uh, on a rent. What a spot. What a spot. Now this gate is uh, uh, the next thing to tackle. for uh, 6 or 5 p.m. for the final uh, destination time so that's pretty good still gives me more than an hour to play with uh, so yeah I am happy 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 now I didn't include any of the uh, photo rally points there was only one that was kind of on the route today but I decided not to put it in because it was adding in about two hours to today's route and it's one that I can easily get on a day trip from home so uh, rather than impinge on today's travel I left it for another day I mean with the uh, with the photo rally you've got most of the year to get all the points so it's not a race So 
let's push on. Another beautiful piece of coastal road. I think we're heading into towards Clifton. And then just after Clifton, we'll get to what's called the Sky Road. And it's this kind of a looped road. It's a looped drive that goes off uh, a peninsula beside, uh, just above Clifton uh, town. Um, but it's uh, gorgeous. Uh, it can get very narrow and uh, twin tracky in sections but if you can get right down to the end of it, uh, nice view there well the sun was shining so here's Clifton now we're just coming into it So there's one of the church spires we were looking at up on that old cock and brown. Look, there's one, two of them there. I see the whole town backs onto the river here. Or is it a lock? I'm not sure if it's a lock from the ocean. Yeah, I think it's the ocean, not a river. This is Clifton. I see everyone trying to eat outside in the rain. <laughs> Outdoor dining in Ireland. There's the Alcock and Brown Hotel. 